Hello, everyone. This is John Massari, composer of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Join us on Jay-Z Productions. What are you doing during these times of quarantine? Oh, I'm writing a lot of music. Yeah. I'm okay. doing uh, an extended project from last year that's uh, going well, and hopefully I'll be able to share it with everyone sometime around the new year. Cool. That's awesome. What made you want to become a composer, and who's your biggest inspiration for composing? Well, when I was a little boy, uh, I just loved music, and you couldn't tear me away from a radio. So um, it's kind of my official first instrument was the radio. Mm -hmm. uh, music gave me an experience that I really uh, meant a lot to me, and I sought throughout my life to learn how to create music from an early age, even if it was um, getting a, a ruler and stringing it across a rubber band and pretending I was playing guitar while I was listening to the radio. Uh, I went to my first movie uh, matinee as a kid, I think it was six years old, and I saw a triple feature, uh, and the films were Journey to the Center of the Earth, The Time Machine, and Mysterious Island, all fantastic movies and each one of them had a very interesting score and i was just mesmerized by the movie and the experience and i think i discovered soon discovered what made the experience of seeing those movies so magical is the effect that the music had on me during the viewing experience so uh, my mother started uh, practicing the piano and she decided it wasn't for her and I started tinkering on the piano and you couldn't tear me off of it. So that was the beginning of wanting to make music. And it wasn't until I, till I was around 11 or 12 where I realized it was an actual uh, profession that you could pursue to, to make music to movies. Uh, and not everyone knows that. Even to this day, people don't quite understand that what they take for granted, which is music that they hear in media all the time, is created by people uh, uh, on a daily basis. I mean, that's all they do. It's a, an entire industry. So uh, that's basically how I got started. It's a very, very simple little story like that. Cool. That's a cool origin story. <laughs> What's your favorite thing, that, like composing thing you've done, like for a film, to show like your favorite one? Favorite today? You know, I don't have one favorite. Mm -hmm. There are some things that are just a job. You know, even when I worked in the ad business for quite a while, doing uh, commercials for, you know, IBM and Ford and Chrysler and just all kinds of name brands, each one was a special little challenge. You get an assignment. That's the profession. That's the uh, craft part of being a composer. When someone says, we need this sort of music and it has to be done in a certain way, and it's a certain style and it has to be done within a certain time. Are you interested? And you either say yes or no. Obviously, I'm very fond of killer clowns from outer space. When I got that assignment, the little kid in me came alive again. And even to this day, uh, I don't watch it from start to finish uh, as, as a matter of routine. But when I do see it, it's a very fond, and ex uh, fond experience. Uh, I worked at Disney for quite a while. That was a lot of fun. I can't say there's one thing that I like. I, be quite honest with you, the thing that I really appreciate the most is the thing I'm working on right now. If you could pick any uh, movie, TV show, etc., what role would you have loved to compose? But obviously, obviously you didn't, but you wish you did. I mean, there are movies that have been, that I have uh, auditioned for that I have, I have not got, that I wasn't awarded the uh, the contract. However, I, I don't have a regret. I don't, I don't look at it. I mean, I'll be quite honest with you. The, the last Star Trek movie, The Unforgotten Country, I did. I auditioned with for that, and uh, and I think I did a very good job. They went with uh, Cliff Eidelman, and I, I actually went to the movie theater and saw the movie. I thought he did a su superb job. It wasn't going to be what I would have done. However, the movie experience was was very good, and I was grateful to even be considered 
to uh, audition for it. It's it's quite a quite a thing. But I had no regrets. Like if you can imagine professional baseball players, sometimes they win a game, sometimes they lose a game. There's another game that you're going to play. There are TV shows that I admire. Castle Rock, for instance, I love the score that Thomas Newman does for that. Very brilliant, very innovative. But it's not like I wish I did that. I mean, I would love to do it. However, he did it and he did such a spectacular job. I'm just mesmerized by the story, the TV show, the whole spirit behind it. And the music is just the icing on the cake. Over the years of your career, do you still keep in touch with your co-star, the co-stars, the directors, all of them? Well, I keep so much in touch with them that we'll be doing a um, a Zoom meeting this Saturday, just in a few days. So it's going to be myself, Keogh Brothers, I think Grant Kramer, and Suzanne Snyder, who played Debbie. Here's the Keogh Brothers. It's being hosted by Nostalgic Nebula. Do we meet every Thursday for cards? No. Uh, <laughs> It's from time to time, maybe maybe once a year or twice a year, We uh, there's some event that we both attend. Who is the coolest person you worked with? The coolest person I worked with? Bear McCreary. I helped him out on a movie he was working on, and that was a lot of fun. He's a lot of fun. He's a very uh, creative, very spirited uh, composer, very sweet guy, just a great overall person. Director Josh Becker, and I didn't meet him in person. We did everything over the phone. He lives in Michigan, and that was a lot of fun. And he's a really cool guy. He's very, very, very well read, a um, uh, man of letters, and we would just have long conversations about just about anything, and not not just about working on his movie. Working with the Kyoto Brothers was a lot of fun. If you were a composer, where would your career be, and what other interests the hobbies you have besides like making music and all that? That's a good question. Um, now, later in life, I think I would like to do something with human behavior okay. because I've probably been exposed to every psychosis and neuroses mentioned in the DM5. When I was going to college, I was working during the summers at an oil refinery and someone says, you know, if you if you major in some basic field in science, you, you can have a job here at Union Oil and you'll, you'll, you'll probably do, do exploration work, travel around the world and get paid and all that stuff. And the, the call of music was stronger mm -hmm. uh, than the call of that. But that would have been fun. It would have been fun to uh, travel all over the world, uh, go out to remote locations, scouting for uh, all kinds of resources. That's cool. Hopefully when things get back to normal, sooner rather than later, are there any projects you have in the works? Uh, yeah, uh, some uh, some live performances. We're working on uh, getting all of that together. What advice would you give younger people or anybody in general that want to become a composer? That wants to become a film composer specifically, a media composer? Any type of composer. Okay. Any type of composer. Well, be true to yourself. But try to find something that's particularly unique to yourself. Hmm. Be prepared that people won't understand it, and that's okay. That's actually kind of a good snipe. If you decide to be really serious and go to university, make sure you don't get into debt during and after. Try to figure out how to save up for it and pay for it. And while you're at university, make sure when you take the common requirements that you're supposed to take, like, you know, they may have, may, may have, you take a math class, you may have to take a psychology class, but if you have to take a psychology class, pay extra attention. When you're at university, you have to do your best not to be distracted because there are many, many, many distractions. And some of those distractions can even come from your family members mm -hmm. because that's your four years to really soak up as much information as possible and make use of it and no one should infringe upon that time. Synopsis of that is be true to yourself. Don't yeah. be afraid to experiment at all. Uh, be aware that people won't understand. People might not even care. That doesn't matter. As long as it brings you joy, it will take time and people will, will discover it. I will say with Killer Clowns from Outer Space, played it to my own dad, didn't understand any of it, thought it sounded horrible. Uh, he liked the fact that he did the wonderful world of Disney theme, like 
eight months before that. Mm-hmm. But this new Killer Clowns movie, he didn't like it. That's okay. It wasn't for him. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you again, Mr. Mazzari, for being a great guest. Thank you for having me. No problem. Stay awesome, everybody. And stay awesome, Mr. Mazzari. You too. Thank you. Take care. Take care.